Summit, presented by the Chase Your Dreams Initiative and the Anne Arundel County Executive Office. Please put your hands together for that. What's up, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we are. What's up, y'all? I go by the name of Gilly the King. Million dollars worth of game. I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all in here are familiar with who I am. I want to tell y'all this, right? The wake up is the win. When you wake up in the morning, that's the win. Because you get another opportunity to chase your dreams. You get another opportunity to be great. You get another opportunity to change anything that you got going on that you want to change in life, any direction you want to go in, the wake up is the win. This is coming from a guy who's, I've been shot. If you know me, you know I've been shot before, a few times. I had a son that died from gun violence who ain't going to get a chance to wake up tomorrow and be great. He lost his opportunity to wake up and chase his dreams. To wake up tomorrow and say, I want to do this, I want to do that, now I'm going to go make it happen. So the real win is when you wake up in the morning. But you got to win the day. The wake up is just the beginning. You got to go out there and win the day. He made a mistake when he was 17 years old. He went to jail for 20 years. Came home when he was 37. One mistake. Nobody didn't get shot, nobody got killed, nobody got harmed, none of that. One mistake. He came home from prison and he owned every day. He's the cultural advisor at YouTube. So the wake up is the win. Every day you wake up, you get an opportunity to be great. You gotta go win the day. I'm gonna tell y'all again, he did 20 years in jail. He's the cultural advisor at YouTube. What's your position at Reform? Chief Marketing Officer, Chief Marketing Officer at Reform. <laughs> so there ain't no limits to what you can do out here. It's no limits to what you can do out here. Seven years ago, he was sitting in a jail cell up to prison doing karaoke night. <laughs> he was the captain of the wrestling team. He was a lifeguard in the prison showers. Do y'all know how many jobs he had in prison? He taught sewing classes. <laughs> Y'all laughing, this was just his life seven years ago. So, I just want to tell every young and in here, I come from North Philadelphia. Five of us in a two bedroom apartment. And we broke the mold. We broke the mold. All because we put God first and we understand that when you put that work in, God will open the doors for you. But it gotta be up to you to put the work in. Not what you think is work, real work. You put the work in, you put the time in, you put the effort in, and God will open any door for you that you, you couldn't even imagine. When he came home from jail, he just put the work in. He didn't know where, where it was going. He just woke up every day and put the work in. Now the rooms he in, around the people that he's in, around the companies that we deal with, is, is unimaginable. So I just want to tell y'all, everybody in this room, especially the youth, the wake up is the win. We gotta be. Uh, we gotta start protecting our communities. When you uh, when you go get a gun and you shoot somebody in the community, you, you, you deteriorate the value of your community. You deteriorate people that work their whole lives, their property value. Um, you make it unsafe in your community. And, uh, 
and you put a target in the community, then that's not a good place to go. We don't want that. You know, uh, I know it's a lot of things that uh, the young can see on social media, and we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get away from the cool idea of in the black community, everything is cool when it comes to destroying your community. It's cool to be a street nigga. It's cool to sell drugs in your community. It's cool to shoot somebody. It's cool to go to jail. But when are we going to start normalizing it's cool to just be smart? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, uh, we, forget, we forget the young ladies in our community because we be so focused on the men. First of all, this one is National Women's Month. Let's make sure it's back. Yesterday was International Women's Day. Let's make some noise for that. <laughs> and yesterday, I went to Chino State Prison for women in California. And I spent the day with a bunch of women. Um, and we never, we never hear the side of the women. We only, when you think of prison, you only think about the men. And the women is forgotten in prison. We forget about showing the mothers, the sisters, the aunts, the grandmoms. And I went to the prison, I walked the yard, with some women that's doing life, some women that have been in there for 30 years, 40 years. I'm talking about, you wouldn't even imagine, 18 years. Um, and just, just talking to them, sharing their story. Y'all gonna see it come out soon. But uh, we gotta really start tapping into these young girls too, because a lot of times we neglect them, because we so worried about the young boys that we forget about them. We, we gotta take care of everybody in the community. But to the young boys, uh, a lot of things y'all gonna see on social media, y'all gotta start looking at it from a different perspective and stop trying to emulate the rappers. A lot of these rappers are, and I, we, we gotta use the word entertainers. A lot of these dudes never done the stuff that they talking about. The same way you watch a movie, but a lot of y'all be so fascinated by that, y'all like, oh my God, I gotta do this. How you gotta do something that nobody never done? <coughs> Just because they entertain you. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be one of the first to tell you, sitting in prison wasn't cool. And we ain't talking about, like, you know, going to the county jail and coming out, being able to call your mom and she come get you. Because a lot of y'all gonna come out here and I, and I gotta be straight up. Uh, if you got any dumb shit on your mind, let it go. Uh, because all you wanna do is put pressure on your, your mom, your sisters, your little brothers, because once you get that jail, now you gotta call your mom, you gotta try to get lawyer money. She gotta figure out, she gotta work overtime. It's taking, taking, taking food and things out of your little brothers and little sisters' mouth, because now you wanted to be an idiot and you wanted to emulate some stuff that wasn't even real, that was an illusion. Social media is an illusion. Mm -hmm. like, a because a lot of y'all on the outside looking at we in the inside. So we know what time it is. We see these dudes. You know what I mean? We in a whole different world than y'all. And y'all be sitting there thinking these dudes is dad and that and that stuff be all propaganda machine to tear our community down and make you believe that you got to do some dumb shit in order to be cool. Cool like that brother said over there, cool is being you. Uh, that's the most safest thing you can do is be you. Because when you you, you ain't got to worry about falling victim to being somebody else. I went, I'm going to be straight up. I spent 20 years in prison. I went to jail for two firearms and two, two armed robberies. I ain't shoot nobody and do nothing. But when I was sitting in prison, I said to myself, oh man, I'm in jail for not even, for trying to be somebody else. I wasn't even me, because I had a conscience and I thought a little bit. So I'm like, I'm in jail for trying to emulate some shit I seen. And a lot of y'all gonna try to emulate some stuff y'all seen on YouTube or somewhere. If you wanna emulate, if you can play the game, you can make the game. You know, y'all gotta start looking at the game and saying, you know what, I don't wanna be a player, I wanna be a coach. Phil, Phil Jackson had Michael Jordan and Kobe. The coaches last longer than the players. Stop looking at things where y'all think, oh, I don't need to be a rapper or a ball player. I don't need to be an entertainer. No, you don't want to lay We got to really start tapping into our ingenuity. We come from extraordinary people. We build pyramids with no cranes. So y'all got to start really tapping into the history to know where we come from and the struggles that took place in the world and in America that got us to here today. Because once you tap into the history, you realize, oh, no, I'm really smarter than this. You know what I mean? If, if you go back and tap to it, we got some of the most inventions in the history of life, us, black people. You see what I'm saying? So we got to start tapping into our ingenuity and stop being dumb. You know what I mean? Uh, and the parents, the parents also, I always got to tap into the parents because the kids not watching, kids not listening to what you say, they watching what you do. See, one thing about this world that we live in now, first we listen with our eyes, then we listen with our ears. 
So you can't be telling your kid, oh, don't be doing this, don't be doing this, don't be doing this. Mom, you, oh, your whole life, mom, you deal with drug dealers. Why your son don't want to be one? You got to think about it. You got to think about who you're bringing in the kid, who you got around your kids. Because kids want to be anything that seems cool. If they see you looking at something in a certain way and it's shiny, they want, they want to be that. When I grew up in the streets of Philadelphia and I used to sit on the curb, in my neighborhood in North Philadelphia, the only people that I seen get respect was the drug dealer. When the drug dealer pulled up in that car with that jury on, playing that music, when he jumped out the car to get the most beautifulest woman in the neighborhood, Miss Johnson, Miss Brown, Miss Green, all the older ladies on the porch, they said, hey baby. They never seen none of Mr. Fred that was coming home that was a plumber or the construction worker. When he was walking down the street dirty, ain't nobody speak to him. The hard working man in the ghetto, we amplify and we put on a pedestal the successful criminal. We love him. From the movies to entertainment, we love that person. Because it's just this, this thrill, the danger. But we got to start highlighting the people, the real men that's in the community doing the real work. Because there's some fathers in here right now that's fathers of kids, it's not their kids because they understand the responsibility that they got to take away in the community. We got to start saying Because when Boo Boo and Black and them go to jail, because they wanted to be some real niggas, they on the football field with their kid. They going down the high level when they getting out of getting like crazy in school. So we got to start taking advantage and we got to understand that we a community and together each achieve more. You see what I'm saying? That's what team means. Together each achieve more. And we stronger together. So we got to start working together to make our community better. I'm happy to be here today. I'm thankful for brothers like you and, uh, and the team that you got for even internal, the even, you know, um, entertaining the thought of giving back to our community. Because so, so many people take, but they never give back. And I think it's very important that we continue to empower people, power brothers like him, rather it's with your help, rather it's with your funds, with any type of resources you got, so y'all can continue to have this. Because if you had this today and it's just over, no, you got to continue to have safe spaces for these kids on a monthly basis. Like if y'all can come together in this gym today, how can y'all come together in this gym once a month to be able to create them places? Because the kids will forget this. You got they gotta be systematic to where it's though. Because everything that took place is systematic. The prison system is systematic. Everything is systematic because I'm gonna tell you something. If y'all put something in place, y'all done. People always talk about prison and rehabilitation, why most people come home and they go back. The prison industry and the justice, the justice department, well, justice system, is a business. Now let me let me say this. Let me say this. It's a business. What business in the world do you know that don't want their customers to come back? So we gotta take care of us. Right. And stop playing. Oh, I hope you in jail doing this. I hope you're doing right. No, no, we gotta make sure they don't get in jail. And they don't get to jail when you put proper programming on them and you consistently love them and they know they got the support. And they don't got one. Because when I grew up, I'm gonna just say this. I ain't had one mom, I ain't had one dad, I had everybody. Every house on that neighborhood could beat my ass out making it home when I do something dumb. And I know you can't do that now. I ain't gonna say it. You can't do that shit now. But I'm just saying it. Like, you see what I'm saying? Uh, it's just about the love. If you can put the love on these kids, and they gotta always be hard, because we always thinking about hard, because in the black community, we taught to be tough. If everybody on that block can love that kid, and, know, and that kid can know he got support, and you can't make it to the game line, oh, I'm gonna go. I know you gotta work overtime. Me and my husband gonna go. We gonna make sure we support him and cheer. That's what we gotta do. And then when we do that, when we love each other, when we start sitting at the table eating, and get off these phones, Stop letting these babies order and all, ordering all these apps, all this food, and start sitting down, cooking a home cooked meal, having real conversations, then the game gonna change. But we got a lot to do, we got a lot of work. And if you wanna work, it's gonna happen. Let's get it. Lock up. Lock yeah, up. You're getting cooked, nigga. Yeah, you're, you're, you're three uh, crazy. Cook, nigga. Yeah, I remember you, you yeah. got a lot of. Come on, places, man. You hear me? It's something you got that you got to be born with. You know what that is? Personality. You hear me? Heart. It take heart to be 11 years old and walk up on the delts and be personable like that. You going places in life, you hear me? 
And you're gonna remember I told you that when you're famous. Watch. Let's get it, man. What's up, man? I got, 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 Basketball. Who your favorite rapper? If you don't say Lil Zay Zay, you owe me money. And every second that you waste, the price goes up. Zay Zay. Oh, that's Lil Zay Zay. All right. Um. Final question. Do you have any advice for the youth that's been um a victim of gun violence or has been like a trafficker? Get out the streets. The streets don't love you. That's the biggest advice I can give you. The streets don't love you. And if you jump out here in them streets, they're going to do you dirty like a pair of gym socks.
Grab the bag for Shaggy Rock. Here we go. Jenny. Oh, boy. He's swimming. He's trying. That man is a grandfather, man. Jenny, here we go. One for two. Jenny's for the top of the key. Oh, one for the bridge. Jenny.
Here comes you. Can you three? Timmy, man, we done it, baby. Won the chip. We're going down.